Hi, now it's about 18 months since the American tech billionaire Elon Musk's satellite internet company Starlink entered Kenya. Now the local network market has long been dominated by traditional internet service providers, also known as ISPs, that use fiber optic technology such as Safaricom, Telcom, Zuku, and Fiber. Starlink's entry has disrupted the market with its enticing bargains and better speeds, which has caused a lot of hype among Kenyans. Now, as for the traditional ISPs, well, they are paying attention as well, but mm, let's just say some of them are not happy. So here's the story. We need first to understand what satellite internet is and how it works. These are type of internet powered by satellites in space that orbit around the Earth and transmit signals to an ISP, then to an internet modem at, say, your home or office. Now, it involves the installation of a satellite dish at a strategic point of the premises to receive these signals from space. A Wi-Fi router is then used to provide internet connectivity to phones, computers, and other devices. This is similar to how your regular home internet works. Satellite internet comes in handy in rural areas where broadband internet options such as cable or fiber are not available. In the case of Starlink, it says it has launched more than 3,000 satellites in low Earth orbit since it began launching them in 2019. The company says it is capable of delivering speeds of over 150 megabytes per second, also known as Mbps, to any space on the planet, provided its satellite dish has a clear view of the sky. Now, in contrast, some local providers like Safaricom started rolling out 5G back in 2022 with a promise of delivering speeds of up to 100 Mbps, but the coverage is still scarce and few people have 5G routers. Starlink launched in Kenya in July 2023, but while it has offered competitive priced internet packages and better speed, the hardware cost is what have turned many people away. Initially, the Starlink kit cost about 74,000 Kenyan shillings, but the price went down as they began being sold at local retail chain stores like Carrefour and Naivas and online marketplaces like Jumia. Earlier this year, the company announced an offer to reduce this hardware cost to as low as 39,500 shillings. Last month, it gave another deal, selling the kit from 29,000 shillings. Starlink also introduced a kit rental option in Kenya, where one pays a one-time activation fee of 2,700 shillings, a monthly hardware rental fee of 1,950 shillings, and the service plan that starts at around 1,300 shillings a month for a 50 GB monthly data plan. Now compare this to Airtel's 3,000 shilling offer for a 50 GB monthly package and Safaricom's 45 GB monthly plan that goes for 2,500 shillings. So that's where the anxiety kicked in. Safaricom wrote to the Kenyan government asking it to reevaluate its decision to grant licenses to satellite internet providers. As all this is going on, we should also know that while Starlink's entry into the country is what has caught Kenya's attention the most, it is not the only satellite internet service provider operating in the country. There are several others, including Visocom, Skynet by Telcom, NTVSAT, and Viasat. Safaricom itself last year said it was working towards introducing satellite internet. There are no official figures of Starlink's uptake in the country, but data from the Communication Authority of Kenya shows that the number of satellite internet users locally rose from 1,354 in three months to September 2023 to 2,933 in the last quarter of last year. Going by the frenzy Starlink's offers have been causing among Kenyans online, it is certain that these figures have certainly gone up. Now, the Communication Authority of Kenya is yet to respond publicly to Safaricom's request. For more on this and other stories, check out the Citizen Digital website.